Hello people, uh, my name is Alvin, I'm a Houdini Visual Effects Technical Director and um, well, I'm just going to give you guys a quick introduction to what um, Houdini Digital Assets can do for you. Um, my background is more in film, actually it is in film, but uh, you know, I just thought i seen the interest of uh, you know, Houdini Engine and uh, you know, Assets, right? I thought I'd write a little um, video on how, you know, what's so special about um, Houdini compared to other packages and stuff. So for today, right, I'm just going to give you a quick overview on, uh, you know, like um, how the digital assets work in Houdini. So, um, okay, so, you know, Houdini, right, is a, a node-based uh, workflow. So this is a custom node, right, I just finished writing just for this um, video. Now, so this particular node, right, takes in two inputs. So you can see here there's a ground there's a ground input for you know your ground mesh and there's a curve for the fence we see so the lovely thing about a procedural uh, setup is right you know whenever your inputs change right your you know the setup if it's properly designed right you know will update to keep track of what's going on so in this case here right what I have is you know um, a grid so as you can see right we start off with you know geometry and every node, right, after that, right, modifies uh, geometry after that, right. So what I have here, right, is this uh, grid so surface operator. It just gives us a, a grid. And the sculpt sort, right, basically allows us to deform it, you know, just paint deforms and stuff like that. So I have done that. And, you know, I've got these three little bumpy things here. Of which, okay, let me bring up my curve. And now I have a curve here. I've drawn this curve right to represent where I want my fence to lay. But you can see right the curve is actually you no. Know, uh, at y equals zero, it's actually not along the along the you know not along the you know curvature of the plane and stuff like that. So uh you know but but that's that's fine because um, the digital asset that I've actually created here right only needs to take in uh you know a mesh, something like that, and a curve and it will actually just you know, and it will generate, you know. Um, we generate the fence based on these two inputs, and uh, this is more or less the the result. Let me see what's up here. Right, this guy probably doesn't have a color, so I'm just gonna color it white, and that should be fine. No, this is so embarrassing. Uh, oh, there we go. It was this ah it's a viewport update thing anyways um all right so you can see right so to demonstrate you know what's so special about this right i can actually change my curves right let's say i can change uh, you know the structure of my curve right you can see the asset dynamically updating on the fly all right so this is one of the beauty of uh you know houdini all right so you know like right now, right, I'm just modifying the, the curve, right, but I can also uh, modify, you know, the terrain. And you can see that it's actually, you know, sculpting along and deforming, you know, as expected. Alright, so you can see, right, it's, it's a very nice way to work when, you know, your assets actually react to what's uh, going on, which is, you know, why I move from other packages, you know, to Houdini. Once once you discover Houdini, right, it's like, can't really do it. Now, right. Um, Alright, so now the thing about this, right, it's just this this asset, right? It's not just okay, let me jump into the asset, right? A digital asset, right, is basically, you know, a collection of nodes, basically, you know, the network, you know. Uh, you know, obviously, right, it's like, you know, given a curve and you know, this terrain, right, it can't just automatically, you know, generate for you a fence, you know. So what this setup does here, all these nodes, right, is actually take, you know, all your inputs. And you know, generate um, you know the final results by you know applying you know transforms or you know some modifiers and stuff like that to your incoming data, right? So and the lovely thing, right? You know, you got you know lots of nodes here, right? With all the parameters here, right? You don't well, not all the times, right? It would be nice if you actually could like you know get an interface for your artist or stuff like that, right? So that's where um, you know the digital assets come in. The digital assets, right, you know, it's actually safe to, you know, safe on disk as a file. And, you know, it makes it easy to send to artists or stuff like that or, you know, you know uh, repositories or, you know, whatever. 
So, but basically, if, if, if I have an asset, I can just save it to a file, which is an OTL file, and you know, I can pass it to another person or another TD, and you know, he can install the asset and he can use it. That's uh, the beauty of you know, um, assets in Houdini. And um, you know, the assets right, allow you to create interfaces as such. So let me demonstrate to you, right? So we actually have, you know, this is the fence asset that we created. And you can see, right? I mean, you've seen early on, right? By adjusting the incoming data, right? You know, things update on the fly, which is, you know, great. But apart from that, right? We still have a lot of options to, you know, make, you know, modify this. So these are some of the options that I've um, exposed for the user. You know, instead of jumping inside here and making changes, right? Which you can do. Um, you know, I've exposed some of the uh, commonly used things which, you know, may be useful. So, let me see. Um, okay. I've got this point start offset which is, you know, okay, let's just see what it does. It controls, you know, where, you know, where the, you know, the bending starts. And point scale here, you know, determines how, you know, how pointy the point is. And... You know, so you got you know got this fence thing, right? You can have a height offset, right? But sometimes you know fences aren't perfect. You know what I mean? So for this particular one, right, I actually put in a random height offset, so it allows you to determine how much offset you have. You know, so you can have you know fences that are not you know perfect, perfectly like you know the same height all the way. So yeah, so this you know if height offset is a zero, right? All the you know. Uh, you know, all these vertical poles, right, will be the same, but, you know, high offset will give you some variance. And, you know, there's a seat control if you don't like this particular setup. And there are controls for, you know, total number of planks. You can go from, you know, this all the way to... Da -da -da -da. Right? This seems to be a reasonable one. And, of course, there are controls for, you know, like plank width. So, you know... Uh, oh, wait, sorry, this is... You know, Okay, I, I mislabeled them, but this is the thickness. And, you know, plank tape actually controls the height. Oh, no, sorry, width. So, as you can see, right, so you got control. And, you know, you can, again, right, do stuff like, you know, random thickness, you know, add some random thickness or random, you know, widths, right? I just didn't do that for this particular setup because, you know, I want to do stuff and not create digital assets for the whole, the whole night. Now I, and, okay. And we have this plank rotation, so this one just allows us to rotate this. It's just, yeah, just, just, it's just using, you know, just a tension to the curve and using that as a create a new thing to rotate. Um, what else? Never mind. Let's ignore the rotation. Back to zero. You control middle mouse. And you know, okay, we have this bar thing here, right? So you know, bar offset, and you know, you have multiple bars. You know, okay, maybe not that many. Uh, and you can determine the offset. So you know, and if you really want to, right? You know, you can you can set it up so that you know it's not so perfectly you know linear. Like you know, the bar offsets can be varying for each of them and stuff like that. All right. So I'm just gonna do a quick pause and save this video before I you know I just dive into this asset quickly to show you what's inside. And okay, so let's take a look inside the digital asset. So, you know, this digital asset, right, you know, you can just save it to a file, pass it to people, and you can, of course, make modifications to it. So, I'm going to allow editing of contents and jump in. So, these are the nodes that actually make up, you know, just this uh, dynamic fence object. So, let's take a closer look. So, as you can see, right, we actually have two inputs here, the curve, which is this and the ground plane. So how do we actually create assets out of this? I'm sorry, how do we create a fence out of this to geometry, right? So first, right, we have a curve. And uh, I think this curve is a NURBS curve. Yes, this is a NURBS curve. Well, you can actually put in any curve anyways. My asset will create, will, will convert it into a, uh, you know, regular polygonal type curve. And, okay, so that's what the resample uh, SOP does. The resample SOP, right, will, apart from, you know, converting it to a polygon, it will also allow us to determine how many uh, segments or how many, you know, seg you know basically uh, resample the curve and, you know, how many points are there to be on the curve. Um, yeah, so in this case, right, I'm just using maximum segments. So there's options for, you know, segment lengths. So if you, you know, you want uh, very even spacing, right, you can use maximum segment length. But I choose maximum segments. 
and you know given that this is a you know you can actually set it up so that you can allow users to choose you know either or and, and stuff like that all right so now right we have this curve right but and i want to project this curve on this geometry so um first thing i want to do right is actually want to raise the curve above the geometry so i you know we can actually just you know just use a transform operator to just move the curve up but we don't the the geometry might be you know really high stuff like that we don't know which is why we you know the procedural nature of houdini right we use a lot of um expressions so on my transform operator i can see the the curve has jumped here the transform operator has this uh b box um, expression basically right the b-box expression right references a node which is ground plane and tells us to re return the maximum uh, y height right which is you know this dy max and i've just added one in y just to be you know for, to be safe so no matter what kind of geometry is coming in here right it will always you know be above by one unit right and okay point right point just sets the normal that's my ray direction and the ray sop will project uh, geometry onto another geometry it has other users as well but this is what i'm using it for and you can see right so the curve is nicely projected onto the mesh you know so if i actually you know if i change the input mesh right you know this will update automatically that's the beauty of procedural uh, setups and uh, well this is getting a tangent my way of getting a tangent of the force but never mind let's just skip all this this is this is getting the at least the rotation thing i don't talk about that right now okay but so we have a curve right um because i said really i really want to keep this short this whole section here basically sets up um the vector that tells us you know what's the up vector you know, so you know, it will, it, will, it will instance objects using that vector, and uh, the uh, well, that's the up and normal. So the normal is used to determine, um, you know, the up there. <sighs> Basically, there's it, uh, when you are copying stuff on, uh, you know, in Houdini, right, onto one pieces of geometry onto geometry, you need like two attributes, and these are the attributes that uh, I've created to do that. So. Um, blah blah blah, and here's the copy. So this copy, right, is the one that actually copies these uh, planks onto the curve. And you know, you see, right? I'm actually the left input is being copied onto the right input. So the right input is this curve. Let me get rid of this thing. So you see, the curve is here, and the copy sort, right, basically instances objects, not instances, just copies uh, objects coming in on the left to the right. Right, so in this case, it's you know, uh, this kind of plank. So if I can actually like put down like, you know, platonic solid, you know, like a blah, 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 teapot maybe, you know, so if I copy, so I'll be instancing. Now why is it taking so long? Yeah, there we go. You know, I'll be instancing the teapot on here, and obviously the rotation of the teapot is not correct, but I think you guys get the idea. And back to this. So this thing here, right, is actually just it started life as a box, the fence. Actually, started life as a box. Now this this whole axis here, right, this whole thing here, actually could be another digital asset. So as you can see, right, you can you know you can have artists uh, modeling you know various small little assets, which you can then you know instance onto and uh, make changes to them. So in this case, right, you have a box, and these two group. Sops, right? They just select specific uh, vertices uh, points. Not a very good workflow, but it serves to demonstrate what I need to demonstrate. So we've got some transforms that uh, move the points here. So this one actually adjusts. Uh, it's actually like you know, it's the control from this level. This level's control, right? The offset here, as you can see, zero point zero seven six, is being sent here. So you know data is you know the the flow of data is you know from here sending it in adjust the points adjust all the height offset and you know just copy the stuff on all right so that's how things are doing and this whole section here creates uh the bars so the bars are really very you know very similar to this you I, i'm just all I'm, all I'm doing right is i'm um copying a set of points onto the curve and 
I'm actually instancing these little uh, you know, cross sections onto those points and just skinning them and we're getting something like this um, I'm smoothing them a bit and uh, only applying the Y axis that's what this thing here does you know Y values into the curve and this copy here right you can see right number of copies and the translate here in Y right reflects um, see the number of bar copies and the bar copy offset so and once you merge them together right this is your you know uh, fence asset so yeah so that's just a very quick overview of um, you know how digital assets work in Houdini all right so I hope you find this interesting and uh, maybe you can adopt this kind of uh, workflow to you know whatever projects you guys have all right all the best